insured. So, I mean, you're going to want to read this because I'm going to give you a little piece of it, just a little piece, so that uh, you can understand what I'm getting at here. It says, it's an important distinction to make between free enterprise and private enterprise. Free enterprise is a laissez fair free market deal with the peaceful interactions between individuals being wholly regulated by the, unregulated by the government. Under free enterprise, anyone can trade with anyone else on mutually agreeable terms. Since all interactions are voluntary, all trades necessarily benefit, and both wealth and welfare are free to increase without the imposition of artificial limits. In other words, people doing business among themselves without the government telling them how they have to do it. Private enterprise, it says, in contrast, means merely that business and the means of production are held in private hands although the government may make any number of demands on how these individuals go about their businesses. The fascist governments of Europe in the past century, that would be uh, Hitler and Mussolini to some degree, um, even Japan, maintained a system of private enterprise while simultaneously exercising near-complete control over business operations. Similarly, the Roosevelt economy, that would be a U.S. president for you Jay-Z fans, during World War II was marked by extensive private enterprise serving the pleasure of the government. In other words, if you get rid of them being able, the new companies, the power plants from being opened using your tax dollars, they won't be able to be opened at all. Friends, the last four stories I'm going to get to here on the Fukushima update are dealing with uh, how nuclear power is being viewed throughout the world. This is not good. It says, beyond Iran and Pakistan, seven nuclear wannabes. It's like they never learn. They just never learn. Other countries that want to blow themselves up. The United Arab Emirates. They're mostly relying on imported gas for its electricity needs, but in no way the study indicated a near tripling of power demand by 2020, with natural gas supplies only capable of supplying half that. So what they want to do is build a nuclear power plant so they can kill more of their own people than the Jews ever have. Uh, Turkey, according to the World Nuclear Association, electricity demand in Turkey is expected to rise from 800 kilowatts an hour in 1990 to nearly 2,000 kilowatts an hour per year in, uh, in 2009. So again, Rather than do the wise thing and realize that while coal is definitely not healthy to have in the air, that a coal plant is a hundred million times better than a nuke plant on the health of the public, of the world. Man-made global warming is not happening. It's a lie. You can find proof of this from looking up climate gate. So countries that are doing it for that reason, you mean to tell me that Japan did the environment a favor? Three Mile Island was a favor to the environment. Chernobyl was a favor to the environment, even if you were dumb enough to believe in global warming. Think. Lithuania, a tiny country sandwiched between Russia and Latvia, Poland and Belarus, in 09 shut down its last nuclear reactor that was generating 70% of its electricity. In order to reduce its dependence on Russia, now it wants, which is 90% gas, it's working with GE, that's TEPCO, Hitachi, to build a new nuclear power plant in Visaginas. Now, if you were a country and you were going to have a nuclear power plant built by somebody, which is a very unwise decision, would you pick TEPCO, General Electric, to build it? That's... Uh, That'd be like asking Adolf Hitler to open up a Jewish memorial hospital. This is not the people to ask. Good Lord. Am I comparing uh, Hitler to General Electric? Yes, but General Electric is worse. Not only do they kill their own people, they kill everybody's people. Poland. The Polish government in 05 decided to enact a plan to diversify its mix of energy which is heavily dependent on coal and gas. 
Four years later, Poland's Council of Ministers called for the construction of at least two new nuclear power plants, proving that the Poles are maybe as mentally challenged as the jokes say, at least in leadership positions. Belarus! Like Lithuania, Belarus also derives nearly all of its gas from Russia, so it would like to see if it could blow itself up as well. Vietnam! With over a third of its power coming from hydro, the third of the gas and the rest from the coal, the energy-hungry Southeast Asia juggernaut is poised to diversify its power requirements into nuclear. Um, I'll tell you what, they're going to end up butchering more of their own people than they lost in the war. And lastly, Bangladesh. Densely populated, so they're all going to suffer from it. Around half of its 160 million population lives without electricity, so the best thing you can do is build a 1,000 MWE nuclear power plant for $2 billion and poison them, give them cancer, heart disease, and greatly limit the quality of their life. So now they have electricity, and they can look at their new cancerous tumors. And if you don't believe that this is the case, then look up the cancer rates that exist around nuclear power plants, even when they're running properly. Um, Obama's deal would allow Iran to start building nuclear bombs in about 10 years. This is from Michael Snyder, End of the American Dream. Should Iran be permitted to build as many nuclear bombs as it wants just a decade from now? Shockingly, that is precisely what the deal that the Obama administration is currently negotiating would allow Iran to do. Even the Washington Post, an enthusiastic cheerleader for Obama all these years, says that the deal is the equivalent to giving Iran everything that it wants. Sadly, ever since negotiations with Iran began several years ago, the stance of the Obama administration has been to retreat, retreat, and then retreat some more. It goes on that in 05, the Western world was insisting that Iran was not going to be allowed to have any centrifuges at all, which they shouldn't. But now, we are going to allow Iran to keep all of the nuclear infrastructure that it has built up, and a decade from now, it will be allowed to start building nuclear weapons. This is a country that is run by genocidal Islamic fanatics that consider the United States to be the great Satan. They want to wipe the nation of Israel off the planet. Now, again, it did not say that he paraphrased it. That's because that phrase is not Ahmadinejad. When Ahmadinejad said that he wanted to wipe them off the planet, he meant the leadership. This quote is going to what the rest of the Iranian government want. And let's, even if you're on the side of these madmen, and I have no idea why you would be, they are sitting on an earthquake zone. You could take every non-Islamist fundamentalist in the world and erase them. You could let Iran live there and have no enemies to fight and they would still melt the plant down because the plant is going to experience a massive earthquake like Japan did. So there is no way that this should be allowed to be built even if they're not trying to build bombs. Just to be clear, even if you are one of these lunatics that think that uh, Iran is somehow going to be responsible with a nuclear weapon. You're the kind of person that would hand a child a hand grenade. Under no circumstances should Iran ever be allowed to build even a single nuclear weapon. If Obama goes through with this deal, he is betraying the U.S., the, Israels, the, Is the Israelis, and the entire Western world. I would say so. It says, needless to say, the Israelis are expressing dismay at this potential deal, according to the Wall Street Journal. On Monday, Israeli Intelligence Minister Yuval Steinitz said Israel considers the negotiations totally unsatisfactory because it would allow Iran to be extremely close to a dangerous breakout program. Referring to the latest suggested compromise, he said, For a 10-year delay in Iran's nuclear program, you are sacrificing the future of Israel, the U.S., and the rest of the world. And he's right. Any deal, it says, that gives Iranians the right to build nuclear weapons a decade from now is a betrayal to our future. A Washington Post is thankfully speaking out against it. It says Iran gets everything and we put the good seal of approval on it. This is even more absurd than when one considers how inferior the inspection safeguard would be, since Iran has never come clear on the extent or whereabouts of its illicit, illegal nuclear program. 
Michael Makovsky, CEO of the pro-Israel Jinsa, says bluntly, if this report is true and it is consistent with the trajectory of the talks, it would mark a reckless capitulation and disaster. So how is this different from Israel having a nuclear weapon? I can tell you in two ways. First of all, Israel is not going to likely, that we know of, experience a devastating earthquake. It is mathematical, scientific fact that Iran is. Don't argue with me, I'm right. Second of all, Israel has denied that it owns nuclear weapons. Do I think it does? Do I, do I believe that it does? Of course it does. But if you're denying that you own them, you are not threatening your enemies with them. Iran has threatened its neighbors with everything from dirty bombs to nuclear annihilation practically since the inception of uh, the modern lunatics that are now running the country. It says it would be inconceivable. We're not talking about the Obama administration. What is most troubling about this emerging deal, apart from the way in which the Obama administration appears ready to cave into every Iranian insane nuclear demand, is that the deal will only be for a short duration after which even the limited constraints on Iran's nuclear weapons program will disappear, says sanctions guru Mark Dubowitz of the Foundation for Defense and Democracy. He observes, It is remarkable to think that in a decade or so, Iran's nuclear program will be treated no differently than Japan's or Germany's. The passage of time alone will be sufficient to convert Iran from nuclear pariah to nuclear partner. And again, I don't think countries need to be having these things because the breakdown of them 